I started in gold mining back in 1980. Got out of the Navy SEALs just after Vietnam. I was looking for something to do and the gold prices started going up. And um, with all my underwater experience, I, I had the idea that maybe I could find some gold. The old timers, the earlier generations of miners, um, they were not able to get out into the middle of the river, especially the bigger rivers like, like this one because they didn't have the technology to get the water off the gold deposits. And so that's left long reaches in the, in the modern rivers that have yet to been mined. And um, the only technology for getting down at the bottom of these rivers is with suction gold dredges. And, um, and I've, I've been doing that for a long time and have, have somewhat developed a big part of the technology to get to the bottom of these rivers. The beauty of gold mining is that all we have to do is go down there and trade our labor, hard work, as much as we want to do, as hard as we want to do it, we can turn that right into real wealth. Most of us who are out here doing it, we make a good wage and we live free. Uh, the, the cost of living out here isn't very much, the overhead isn't very much, and the amount of gold that you can pull out of the river if you work hard if you work hard and you get through the learning curve, um, can be quite substantial. It's one of the few things that anybody can do in the modern age and actually bring real wealth right up and show it to you in your hands. At any given time, there's at least 100 prospectors, sometimes more, around here associated with our group. And as a result of that, there's a secondary economy that has, that has sprung up all along this river and even into Wairika and into Medford uh, because everybody that comes out here has to buy groceries, needs to get their hair cut, stays in the RV parks, buys uh, uh, supplies for their car, gas, you know, all of the things that somebody needs when they're, when they're living and also when they're operating equipment on the river. And um, our estimate is that the annual income associated with our program is $60 million a year. $60 million plus thousands and thousands of dollars that we pay in taxes. It's quite a substantial economy that has built up all around the, the, just this one single activity of gold mining. Our adversaries have filed several lawsuits. The first one was against the Forest Service uh, about three or four years ago. They sued the Forest Service to stop suction dredging. We intervened because we didn't believe that the federal government was really defending our rights as well as we could. And so we intervened in the litigation and won it. And since then, they have turned around and they've sued the state of California twice. And that's on the grounds that the environmental impact statement that supports our regulations was completed in 1994, and they're saying that it's too old. And so they want that environmental impact statement updated, and so do we. We would love to go through that process. We're very comfortable that nothing has changed in the way that fish are doing things and nothing has changed in the way that we're doing things. And we believe that if you put us under a microscope, we would make it through the, the process just fine. In the litigation, the judge ordered the state of California to update the EIR. The problem is that the state of California is broke. And it has taken them a long time to get the money together to, to pay for the update. And they've started the EIR process, but it's not moving fast enough for the anti-mining activists, so they are now suing to shut down our entire industry until the EIR process is finished. We have a whole industry, a $60 million industry that has built up around an environmental impact statement and the anti-mining activists have yet to come forward with one dead fish, not one dead fish, not one harmed fish, not one bit of, of any information that would show that we're causing any harm to any fish all they can say is that the EIR that supports us is too old. But they can't say anything that we're doing wrong. It would seem like our adversaries are moving forward to take our entire industry away from us just because California doesn't have enough money to study us. And, and that, would, that, that would seem fundamentally wrong. The reason they haven't been able to get judges to shut us down is because the judges keep saying that an evidentiary hearing would be necessary so that he can weigh the evidence of harm. And, and we keep saying, let's have an evidentiary hearing, but our adversaries say, no thank you. And that, that's because they don't have any evidence of harm. So what they have done, because they can't get a judge to shut us down, is they've gone to the California legislature, and they have uh, managed to pass a bill through the California legislature. It just, it just passed the Senate a couple days ago, and that bill is called um, Senate Bill 670. And it's now going to the governor. 
It's, if the governor signs that bill, it will eliminate our industry altogether until the environmental impact statement is finished. And our concern is that uh, this process of an environmental impact study and, and the, the California Environmental Quality Act will allow for our adversaries to sue and obstruct the process and they can keep that process going for 10 years or longer, basically putting us out of business. Not for anything that we ever did wrong, but just on the, on the question uh, if our earlier EIR is too old. If they shut our industry down, not only are they going to eliminate the small-scale gold mining industry in California, and that's going to follow to Oregon for sure, but they're going to, they will eliminate all of the secondary business enterprises that support that. In Siskiyou County, Northern California, the official unemployment rate is 17 percent. Watch that go up when they put the miners out of business. That, that right there is freedom, economic freedom right there. And uh, we, we Americans ought not to give it up uh, lightly.